So in today's video, we're going to be testing the Action 5 Pro, putting it through its paces with the stabilization modes. So first of all, we're going to be doing some walking around with the stabilization deactivated, and then I'm going to be running around as well. And then I'll be enabling the rock steady mode, again, doing some walking and running. And then finally, the rock steady plus. But first of all, we'll deactivate all stabilization. We're going to film in 4K30, standard D warp, aspect ratio 16.9 automatic mode straight out the box just so you can see what it looks like right now as you probably tell from the footage you can see it's a little bit shaky because i've deactivated all electronic stabilization yeah so now i'll turn the camera around so you can see what the footage looks like facing forwards again i'm just walking at a normal pace and as you'll see from the footage yet again it's very shaky I can see that from the rear OLED screen that this footage is completely useless. And finally, I've got the camera to the side of me just so you can compare that with the vlogging style and the camera facing forward. Again, the footage is going to be rather shaky. So let's start jogging around and see what the footage looks like. Again, the electronic stabilization is deactivated. So keep an eye on all the architecture. I can imagine when I'm running like this that it's really shaking all over the place. And it's not the look I'd go for. I know some people do prefer not to have stabilization activated. But I like to keep it on. Right now I'm going to turn the camera around and do a little jog around just to see what that footage looks like. Here we go. And I would imagine that this is worse than when it's facing me. Because when it's facing me, at least you've got a subject to focus on, even though it's going to be rather unusable footage. But I can see from the OLED screen at the rear but it's shaking all over the place. Right, now the camera's to the side of me. Again, image stabilization deactivated. Careful not to whack the camera on where the doors used to be. Again, what's that footage look like? Right, now you're gonna see a massive difference as I've enabled Rocksteady, and I'll start the jog and straight away you'll see that image stabilization kicking in and all the straight lines and architecture won't be wobbling as much and now the camera's facing forward with Rocksteady enabled and as you'll see the footage becomes a lot more usable than when you've deactivated the stabilization Again with the camera at the side. Rock steady enabled. That footage is going to be a lot more usable than when the than when I deactivated the stabilization. Now I've enabled Rock Steady Plus, but keep in mind the focal length is going to punch in to a focal length of 17 millimeters. When you deactivate it, it's 14 millimeters. The normal rock steady mode jumps to 15 millimeters. And now the Rocksteady Plus focal length for 17 millimeters. So let's start running. I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive with the camera. So I've got the camera stretched out in front of me just as before, but I'm really not taking care whether to stabilize this or not myself. So hopefully the Rocksteady Plus is going to keep everything stable. So this is Rocksteady Plus enabled now. Again, I'm not paying any attention to try and stabilize this footage. So it'll be interesting to see if the Rocksteady Plus stabilizes the footage a lot more than the standard Rocksteady. And now I've got the camera to the side of me. Let's start running with the Rocksteady Plus enabled here. And can you tell any difference to when the Rocksteady was enabled to the Rocksteady Plus? Again, I don't think there's that much noticeable difference 
The only difference being when you're getting really aggressive with the camera, I'd highly recommend enabling Rocksteady Plus. Right, now I've deactivated all stabilization again, because I'm gonna do this straight long walk and put a side-by-side -side comparison with deactivated stabilization, Rocksteady, and then Rocksteady Plus. Just so you can see all three modes side-by-side -side comparison. So this time I'm just gonna walk down here, I'm not running anymore. So I'm just going to walk to the end of here, 4K30, 16.9 ratio, standard D-warp. But again, keep in mind, it's going to crop into a focal length, the stabilisation deactivating at 14mm, then it jumps up to 15mm, and finally, your 17mm. So again, when all electronic stabilisation is deactivated, you get a focal length of 14mm. When you enable Rocksteady, it's going to jump to 15mm, and then finally, Rocksteady Plus, you're going to get a focal length of 17mm. So I hope you've enjoyed this stabilisation video today. And it's given you a great insight of what the Action 5 Pro can offer with the electronic stabilisation deactivated. And then activated on Rocksteady mode and then Rocksteady Plus. So do stay tuned to the channel as I'm going to be posting plenty more tutorials with this new Action 5 Pro especially over the new modes and new settings. I've already done an in-depth tutorial video on the subject tracking with the Action 5 Pro, and believe me, that's exceptional. I'm really impressed our DJI has managed to implement that in a fixed camera. Now I know on some DSLR cameras you get face tracking, but this is actually subject tracking. It's completely different. Just go and check out the video. It's absolutely flawless how it works. I'm really impressed with it. So for now, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and bye for now.